Welcome to Off 63rd with Gerard McClendon. Last week we had incumbents from three wards on the show, but tonight the challengers are in the building. Do they really think they can beat the current alderman, or are they running just for citywide recognition and another Grammy Award? This is Off 63rd, Chicago, from the beach to the burbs. This is Off 63rd with Gerard McClendon. Hey, hit me up on the phone lines at 773-487-3630. That's 773-487-3630. The day of reckoning and victory is April 5th. Pavement pounding candidates will try to sway voters in several aldermanic races. Tonight, we have the challengers from three wards. From the sixth ward, graduate from Chicago Kent College of Law and the son of former Chicago mayor, the late Eugene Sawyer. Welcome, attorney Roderick Sawyer. Running as a challenger in 2007 and 2011, getting 22% of the vote, claiming to be a dedicated servant to the 16th ward, Mr. Hal Baskin. And from the 20th ward, garnering 20% of the vote, Grammy Award winning recording artist, rapper, and writer, Che Rhymefest Smith. Thanks for coming to Off 63rd, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome right. to the show. Hey, let's have a free-flowing discussion. Let's start out by asking you this question. The incumbents did not get 50% of the vote plus one, which means they're in a runoff with the three of you gentlemen now. Let me start with Roderick Sawyer. Why didn't the incumbents get 50%? Uh, in the three wards, most specifically your ward? Obviously, the electorate's not happy. They're not happy with the current state of the condition of the ward. They're not happy with the services that are being produced there. They're upset. They're mad. Just like I was mad when we, we get what we get because we accept what we accept. Yeah. Because the streets are not clean, the services are not provided, uh, we get uh, parking meter deals, you know, we sell our assets down the river, mm. and we just get fed up. And 55% of those people just decided Enough is enough. This is interesting. I want to move to Hal Baskin in your ward. You know, you would think that an incumbent could get 50 percent. What, what, what happened? Well, we, we, we got crime and balance is how it is in the 16th ward. Uh, when you got the lack of job and job opportunities in the community, uh, 60, uh, close to 60 percent of those people said no, enough is enough. Uh, that's it. They, most of them that came out approved that on election day that 57 percent of the population in the 16th ward said enough is enough and we don't want enough. Because crime and violence is something that everybody faces, not only in the city of Chicago, but across this country, yeah. across this planet. And people are sick of it. They're sick and tired of it. And they want to see some new resolve. Che Ryanfest Smith comes off world tour, decides to run for alderman in the 20th Ward. Yes. Why didn't Willie Cochran get 50% of the vote plus one? And why are you running? Well, I think that that's uh, both the same question and answer. I'm running because Willie Cochran can't garner uh, enough votes to win because our ward is not being serviced. And if you look at our ward, for the last 30 years, uh, 63rd Street has been becoming more abysmal than ever. Uh, the empty lots, the high rate of foreclosure, the being the fourth most violent crime uh, ward in the, in the city uh, are, is a reason that my children are unsafe. And if my children are unsafe, then all of the children are unsafe. And I have un a unique ability to help rally the community together. Okay, gentlemen, wild card question. Anyone jump in on this? Shouldn't you give an incumbent more time, though, to to correct some of the ills in the ward? I mean, is two years enough? Is four years enough? Shouldn't you give an incumbent a little bit more time? Come on, Gillies, give them eight. I mean, well, I talk think to certainly me. twelve years has got to be more than enough. <laughs> so <laughs> I believe that you know twelve years is enough. We, we hear things talk about now. Now we want to do this. Now we want to do that. Why haven't we done this twelve years ago? Hmm. Why haven't we talked about opening up schools after, for after school programs twelve years ago? Why haven't we cleaned our streets twelve years ago? You know, why haven't we gotten rid of abandoned buildings, the same abandoned buildings 12 years ago that are still there today? Jay so, Smith, yeah. you wanted to jump in here. And, there, and there's some more immediate things that we can do that don't take three years, that don't take one year. When we talk about uh, green communities, green economy, uh, our ward has two of the most important tools 
uh, in, in the city with the University of Chicago and Kennedy King College. We talk about training and retraining people in jobs that exist today in the new green economy, retrofitting, weatherization. They're talking about building a high-speed rail. This could have been done in two years. You know what? This is uh, The three of you are talking about progression, you know, yes. uh, a progressive state of your wards. How Baskin... Let, just let me say this. Uh, <laughs> You have to have a plan and a program when you go in. If you don't have a plan, I don't care if it takes you 20 years, nothing's going to happen. When you're talking about uh, a high rate of unemployment in the 16th Ward, you're not talking about bringing no new development in. You're not talking about bringing in job creation in. Then you, you, you're going to you're gonna be 40 years there and still end up the same situation. You end up with a runoff, you end up with anything else. But the reality of it is, is that if you have people that are sit on the seat and the, uh, the mayor tells them to jump and they ask how high, then we have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you've got to go in there and be a representative of the people. You talk about the high crime rate, well, we don't have a lot of after school programs. Yeah. You know, to keep those kids off the street Absolutely. doing something positive and productive. We don't have a lot of jobs to keep those kids off the street and have them positive and productive. And when you block pressure like Walmart from coming into community, uh oh. To create That's jobs, uh oh, the w then word. what happens right. then? The that w 400, word. those 400. <laughs> Permanent jobs that come to the community go down the way line. Now my, my, my opponent is saying now I'm for Walmart, which is it? Oh. You're flipping and flopping, now you're for Walmart, but before you was against Walmart, come on. Let's oh be man, serious. Mr. Baskin is on fire. <laughs> Jay Ryan Fest Smith is in the mix. I've got Roderick Sawyer in the mix, and you know what? The phone lines are lit. We're gonna go to Frank on the phone lines. Frank, talk to us on off 63rd. What's on your mind, Frank? When is Rob Fest coming out? Could you repeat that, please? When is Ryan Fest album coming out? Uh, <laughs> Thank you for the question. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have an album coming out. Uh, I decided that my main duty is to the constituents and the electorate of the 20th Ward. Uh, I decided not to do music on a national, international level, that uh, the music that I do will be connected to literacy programs for young people in schools in the ward. We can use music and art as a way of teaching our children and not as a way of profiteering off the backs of people suffering. Okay, this is interesting because uh, Willie Cochran, the incumbent, he's been uh, somewhat attacking you or saying mm -hmm. some things about you pertaining to the lyrics of your mm -hmm. songs. Uh, do you want to just briefly talk about well, that? Well, I mean, you know, uh, it's funny. I was in an interview today and, and someone was asking me, what about the, the, the bad lyrics? And I asked them, which song? What song are you talking about? And they said, I don't know. I don't listen to it. <laughs> That's my answer. If you don't know, then, then wh wh why are we painting a narrative of a young brother that's done nothing but help people? You ask these young people what kind of rap Ryan Fest does. They'll tell you he's a positive rapper. Mm, so what are we saying? My Grammy is for Jesus Walks. My debut album was called Blue Collar, celebrating the working man. So what are we really saying? Okay, this is a good point. I'm going to go to the phones here shortly. Uh, here's the phone number if you want to give us a call. It's 773-487-3630. You can also listen to us on the radio at 89.3 FM. Also, www.wkkc.fm on the web. Let me go to Yvette on the but phones. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm coming back to you two gentlemen. Like Let me go to Yvette. Yvette, <laughs> thanks for calling off 63rd. <laughs> Yvette, what's on your mind this evening? Yvette, what's on your mind? How you doing, Gerard? Excellent. Talk to me. All right. This, qu this question is for Hal Baskin. Yes. At the very present time, you have people that are clearly representing you, who are threatening people to vote for you. Is this the type of leadership and control you would use to run the 16th Ward if you were elected? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have uh, an organization called the 16 Ward Political Task Force. I've been registered people to vote uh, in the deputy registers program since 1984 under Harold Washington. And we will continue to knock on each and every door to get everybody registered that we possibly can. Um, those people who choose not to get uh, registered by a deputy register, they can go downtown or they can go to any public library. But I choose to bring that service to the doors mm -hmm. of the people, knock on each and every door and get them an opportunity to become registered voters and become a part of the process. Part of the process. I'm going to go back to phones. I'm going to come to you, Roderick Sawyer. Let's talk just quickly about knocking on doors. Have the three of you been able to knock on doors? Last week, we talked to some incumbents. One of the incumbents said they didn't have time for that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I You're running for an office. Talk to me. Roderick Sawyer. No, we knock on doors. We go to the L stops. We go where we find people. You know, we don't sit in our office and just wait for people to come to us. We come to them. That's part of our task of being proactive, being accessible to people. 
making sure that we can come to them and address their needs before they come to us. Hal Baskin, knocking on doors. I haven't walked the ward five times. We have knocked on each and every door. I was just out today knocking on doors uh, in the New City area. Uh, I will continue to knock on those because doors because those robocalls, mm -hmm. those encounters are sitting out. People are getting tired of them. Mm. They want to see some flesh. They don't want to see special interests spending a lot of money on literature and robocalls. They want to see you in the flesh. They haven't seen you in three and a half years. Now all of a sudden, if you send in all this literature, somebody vote for me and I'll set you free. That's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. You got to knock on doors. You got to test some flesh. You got to talk to the people. It's they got to know that you're There's nothing wrong if, if the robocalls are taking place, though. There's nothing wrong with a robocall. It just means that it, the candidate has money to get robocalls it, in the mix. It's not, uh, and nothing wrong with the robocalls. So the robocalls was used during the, the, the snow blizzard to let people know that <laughs> this is what's going on, this is what's happening, this is what you need to do. Oh, there's nothing wrong days, with robocalls. Especially when they knew four days before oh, the storm I, I, was Absolutely. Right. So yeah. they're, they're yeah. right. You're, there's nothing wrong with robocalls that are used for the right reason. Oh, absolutely. man. You know what? I, I, I see you on absolutely. the end there, Jay Smith. Let me go to phones. I think I'm going to go to Calvin and parking meters. Calvin, talk to me. You're on off 63rd. Calvin, what's on your mind this evening? Thank you, Gerard. I just want to know, I'm a constituent of yours. Uh, uh, I want to say Ultimate Sawyer. I might as well say that because I'm voting for you anyway. Oh, thank you very much. Is this. Uh, I'd like to know what can happen with the parking meters. I'm driving down 79th Street, which has been a major free street for years, even when your dad was in office. Now I look, it's parking meters over there. I don't know what Ultimate Lyle has been drinking, but guess what? <laughs> She's been drinking the wrong kind of poison because I'm not voting for her when it comes around. But I'm just saying, I'd like to know what would you propose or what would you talk to once you got in the office, the constituents, all the aldermen about the, this parking meter business because I think it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, I'm a senior citizen. And I mean, if I had money and my last name was Gates, it'd be fine. But guess what? I don't have it like that anymore. Wow. And for me to be charged extra money, you know, to park in a free space that's been like that for years, I think something is terribly wrong. And thanks for taking my call. Wow. wow. Calvin Thank is you. on fire. Yes, Calvin is. Calvin yes, is. is the, is yes, the fifth yeah. person on the show yes. Calvin, tonight. I need you to come to my office on 83rd Street and come see me, please. You, but know, you know, let's talk about these questions. meters. Let's yes. talk about these meters, and I'm going to come to you, Chase Smith. Parking meters, big controversial issue in the city. Absolutely. Some people think we gave that away. Okay, yeah, we got a $1.1, $1.2 billion check, but we pretty much gave them away for 75 years. In your ward, parking meters, what's your resolution? Parking meters, it was unfortunate that they sold the parking meters. We could have managed that. Uh, hired a management company, for example, and done a much better job and kept all the revenue, paid them a percentage. Now that we have them, now that we have this horrible situation, I want to do whatever I can to read this contract, which they should have done three years ago. And since I am a lawyer, I want to look at it and see if there's any way we can avoid it. But I know it's difficult right now. Chase Smith. Parking meters. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people have a huge problem, not necessarily with the meter itself as much as the deal that Chicago cut. What's your well, angle on that? Well, yeah, when we look at the $1.3 million deal, and then when you look at Wall Street, it's being sold for $12, $13 billion. billion. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, there, there's an a issue of trust. Can the community trust their local official to make the best deal for the community mm -hmm. and for Chicago? Apparently, they can't, in, in, in my case at least. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, you know, uh, what we would want to do is make sure that when someone goes to church, they don't have to pay mm. to go to church. Mm. We, we definitely in our wards need to make sure that to pray to God or to enjoy the lake. Let's not just talk about war. Yeah, right. You know, a city councilman is a city councilman. Let's talk about going to the lakefront. You shouldn't have to pay to sit down with your family at the beach and have a picnic. Or ride wow. your bike. I told, I told, I told wow. you, but don't those parking meters. Um, my alderman uh, happened to vote it for that parking meter deal. Uh, and there wasn't no parking meter deal for us, no lease, but because you lease anything for 75 years, who's going to be around 75 years from now? They sold that. Mm. that you, you don't sell off your assets. I mean, when you get constant money coming in, uh, uh, so you was right in, in terms of uh, managing it right. The city could have managed it itself. It didn't have much, so much thievery in that department. As you notice, they had a lot of problems with that some 20 years ago, mm -hmm. with them stealing money from the parking meters from the, from the beginning and get a management service. Now, all of a sudden, you're selling off your assets. If the city had managed that right, we still had assets, money coming in on a regular but basis. But I want to yeah. go yeah. a step further with that. I want to go a step further and say, black aldermen haven't been doing their uh -oh. duties. And, I, and I'm going to talk uh -oh. about it like this. When you have black aldermen they have 95% voting records with the mayor. And you go look at Scott Waggles pack, who said, no, something's wrong with this parking meter deal, and waved it in the air, and nobody listened. Mm. Nobody, the, the warner was there. Something's wrong.